بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله continuing on after our brief absence with the study of Shara Sunnah the Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala one of the salaf of this ummah one of our salaf one of the great Imams of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah who was on the Madhab and Fiqh of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal Rahimahumullah Jami'an and may Allah have mercy upon all the Ulama of Ahl Sunnah regardless of what Madhab and Fiqh the Ahnaf wa Hanabila wa Shafi'iyya wa Malikiyya Rahimahumullah Jami'an we left off on the 12th point which clarifies for us the very dangerous madhab of Ahl bid'a wal ahwa because you'll find that Ahl bid'a wal ahwa constantly call for debate and in fact it is a aspect of their minhaj that they love to debate and they're not satisfied with the nasus of the kitab Allah wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah but in fact they always want to debate and they give preference to their intellect as we mentioned uh, in several other of the durus in studying this book and other than this book and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us all. Qali Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala wa kalam wa khusuma wa jidal wa mira muhdath yakduhu shak fi qalb wa in asaba sahibuhu wa al-haq wa sunnah very very imperative ibarah Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala clarified the haq, clarified the truth the truth which is known to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which is clear from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qali member Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala, debating, arguing, and disputing our innovations, which throw doubt into the heart, even if the person reaches the truth and the Sunnah. SubhanAllah. Right there is a qaida. That's a very, very important principle of the method of the Salaf. And this is what distinguishes Ahl Sunnah from Ahl Bid'ah. This is what distinguishes someone who is Salafi following Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah versus those other groups and sects and Ahzab and even those who claim that they're Salafi and claim they follow the Sunnah and claim they follow the Madhab of the Salaf but you'll find this distinction between them and Ahl Sunnah is that Ahl Sunnah detests getting into debate and argumentation and especially so if it becomes an issue of just trying to win a position, gain status amongst the people and rank and prestige and in order to defend your own personal view or put forward yourself. The Ahl Sunnah detests this and this is what the narrations of the Salaf makes clear for us and this is what Imam Babahari was alluding to. And as is mentioned, Al-Musannif Rahimahullah Ta'ala arada an yubayin asula ahl al-ahwa wa manahijihim wa samatihim وَهِيَ خَصُومَاتٍ وَالْمِرَاءِ وَالْجِدَالِ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ وَأَسْمَائِهِ وَأَسْمَائِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَفِسَائِرُ أُمُورِ الْعَقِيدَةِ Very important. So, the author here, he said that the Musannif, meaning Imam Babahari, the author, رحمه الله تعالى, wants to clarify what is the foundation of the people of desires. And what is their minhaj or their methodology or their various methodologies. And what is from amongst their characteristics. 
And it is debating and arguing and getting into controversy with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His divine names and attributes. And with regards to all of the issues in Aqidah. And how can we know that this is true, Ayyallah Habbati Fillah? We can look at this as this author begins to state. So we'll just continue on. He says, Well, Lidalika, Lem Yu'arif Jadal, Will Khusumat Fiddin, Illa Hina Ma Zaharat al Farq, Al Firq, Al Khawarij, Will Qadariya, Wa Ahla Kalam. لأن أهل الحق لا يمارون ولا يتخاصمون ولا يخاصمون في الدين. So then he said, حفظ الله تعالى, and أهل السنة does not get into disputing and argumentation. With regards to issues of aqidah and creed, but rather these issues became apparent when sectarianism began to spread in Islam. So during the time of the first sects in Islam, like the Khawarij, he mentioned the Khawarij and the Qadariyah that when these groups began to debate issues of aqidah, because before then, you know, this is actually during the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, that you had these groups begin to appear, that the Khawarij began to appear, and they began to fight and kill the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, and the Qadariya in Iraq, that they began to come up with these innovative beliefs, from the various outside influences, meaning outside of the fold of Islam, these influences which began to encourage them or make them in, in inclined towards debating and arguing about the creed, about the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That which comes from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Sahaba. So at the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, that these groups began to appear. So they had the Salaf of this Ummah, the Ru'us Salaf of this Ummah, right there. But still their desires, still Shubahat overcame them. And they began to dispute aspects of the creed and take preference to their own understanding, their own intellect versus the understanding of the Sahaba and this is where this bid'ah began this is where much of the bid'ah began because when you think about it now with us only having the text to refer to we were much further away from the pure understanding of those nusus. We have the books, walhamdulillah. We have the ulama, walhamdulillah. And we have the methodology of the salaf, walillah alhamd. But can you imagine people going astray at the time of the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, that the sahaba was, was living, the sahaba was in their presence, and these people went astray. They didn't go back to the Sahaba. In fact, some of them, in reference to the Khawarij and then later the Shia, they made takfir of the Sahaba. They considered them disbelievers, some of the Sahaba. So this shows you the danger of Shubahat. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned two very important things in many of his treaties. I believe in uh, uh, Ubudiyah it's mentioned amongst others where he mentioned the danger of two things that we, we face. And in fact, all people face in one respect or another. And these two things first are a shahwat, wathanian, a shubahat. 
The first thing is a shahwat, meaning our desires. Whether it be an inclination to do all kind of haram. Those things which we're inclined to, whether it be zina, whether it be uh, the various forms of fornication and, and uh, following sexual gratification. Or whether it be, uh, you know, indulging in un-Islamic practices or indulging in drugs and alcohol because there's a certain type of feeling that you get from using those substances which makes you feel good, at least temporarily. And then of course, those other, when we re refer to the, sh the shahwat, the dangers of doing the muharramat, like zina and, and masturbation and, and all those other uh, sins related to those activities, that those things are things that we're inclined <laughs> that we're inclined to. Meaning we all have a desire, most of us have a desire towards the opposite sex. And so by following our vain desires, meaning without bounds, without the boundaries of the Sharia, then we are chasing our Shahwat, we're chasing those dangerous things of the dunya that will lead to our destruction because they, they uh, entail sinfulness and, thing, and shamefulness and things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. And the second thing Shaykh al-Salam mentioned was shubahat. Shubahat meaning those doubtful issues. Getting into whether something you know, getting into the doubtful issues of whether something is haram or halal, you don't really know, and just indulging in it, or something, uh, or following up other madhabs or other faiths and religions by reading in their books and getting involved in, and, 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 and so forth in, into doubtful issues or being led astray by the dawa of, of those other groups and sects and those people especially who want to cause doubt with regards to Islam and doubt with regards to the pristine creed of Islam. So by following up those things and by using your intellect and preferring what you think is correct over that which is correct, meaning the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf, that this leads you into shubahat. This leads you into the doubtful issues. And how many people can we think of in our lifetime that we've seen who follow the shubahat? And let's, let's think of one example that's clear. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Apparently he's Muslim again. But the case of uh, Omar Lee, and this is a man, I think, in Florida or what have you, and he had many videos and he had websites, and his websites were dedicated to attacking Salafis. Coming up with stories and coming up with experiences, some may be truthful, some may be not truthful, of particular bad experiences that individuals had with Salafis and what, whatever, all the things it entailed. But look at the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dealing with people who are not firm and firmly grounded on kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf and ummah is that you'll find whenever they spend their time attacking Ahlul Sunnah and attacking the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah instead of just individuals, individuals who might make mistakes or what have you but attacking the madhab and the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah you'll find that these people flip, as we say, flip the script constantly and the Salaf referred to them as people who you know, they tatanakl, kathir you know, they're always changing one minute he's this one minute he's that, 
Tomorrow he's he's Khawarij, he's extreme Takfiri. The next day he's a, a extreme Sufi and he goes to the graves and makes Tawaf around the graves. The third day he decides he wants to make Bay'ah to Abdullah Herari and he's from Jamaat al Ahbash and he changes the Qibla. And the, and the fourth day he is now uh, leaving that and now he is a Khwana Muslimin and etc. That you'll find that these individuals, they're never grounded. And what's even a Shed Mandalik, what's even worse than that, is the case what happened to Omar is that he left the fold of Islam and he came out and made a YouTube video of how he is now accepting Jesus Christ and things like this then he came back to Islam allegedly now this shows you the danger this is where Shubahat, a person's not even grounded the wind blows to the left he flies to the left the wind blows to the right he flies to the right and then he, he, he disappears so this is the danger, and I know many countless stories of people that I've known, individuals. Some people even who were on the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at one time, and now are not even Muslim. Some to the extent, I know two individuals personally who are now Shia. How do you become a Rafidah after knowing the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah? This is the most, the strangest of affairs. This is something I can't even articulate how strange that would be to go from belief and iman billah and, 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 and the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah and all the ulama the ulama of Ahl sunnah who left behind jewels and treasures for us to leave all of that to go to a madhab which is full of doubtfulness full of shirk full of kufr full of zandaka and heresy and all kind of evils. So that's a very strange thing, but that shows you that sometimes the desires and the shubahat, they will lead you to ultimate destruction. وَإِيَادٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَيَلَ حَبِّتِ فِي اللَّهِ So this point of Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala, it shows us that Ahl Sunnah avoids getting into debate. So if someone asks you to debate and they want to debate with you on the internet or they want to debate on the YouTube or they want to debate on the various Wasail al Ta'lim, Wasail al Ta'limi, that you should avoid it. And the ulama, they make clear that there are certain conditions. And for one, of course, is ilm, is that you have knowledge. So if you are just from you're not even a student of knowledge, I mean you're not studying actively, you haven't really studied a lot of books, you haven't sat with the ulama, at least some ulama, at least one from amongst the scholars or what have you, then you should avoid <coughs> getting in debate, even if you know the truth, just avoid it, do everything you can to avoid it. If it's something very clear, then of course you make it clear, but you keep it concise and you keep it uh, and, and, and you avoid getting in debate and argumentation. Especially if people invite you to this. Because as Allama Shaykhana Abdul Masin al Abad, he said, he was asked once in one of the lectures in the Haram, someone asked him about debating on the internet. And he mentioned in detail about this. And one of the things he mentioned is, as far as leaving this, is because perhaps the person has knowledge but they're not articulate and perhaps the person who is from Ahl Bida and Zandaka they could be more articulate than that person so then they perhaps win the debate even if it was on falsehood because it isn't always that <coughs> everyone is going to accept the truth many people leave the truth many people avoid the truth and people are inclined to that which their desires leads them to. So if they see someone who has a, who's very charismatic, they have a very sharp tongue, they're very wise in, in certain issues and certain affairs, they're going to incline towards that individual over the other one who may be on the haq, but they may not be able to articulate that truth. So this is one of the reasons why we should avoid debates and argumentation. Imam Ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned with regards to this point he said yam qasam al-khasam 
wal jilal fi din ila kismain. He said that debating an argument, argumentation or a controversy with regards to Islam or with regards to the religion is of two types. He said, Awul Jadul Mahmud. He said, the first is the praiseworthy uh, debating or argumentation. The Sheikh said about the good type of debating. He said, in this type uh, of debating, it is the one in which the truth is sought, that the goal of the debate is to get the truth and to affirm the truth and to belittle falsehood. And this, in this situation, this is something that is commanded to do, either as an obligation or as something which is mustahab, that it is recommended. And it just depends on the circumstances. And then he mentioned the ayah, he said, لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى أَدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلَ رَبِّكَ بِحِكْمَةٍ وَالْمَوْعِذَةٍ بِحَسَنًا وَجَادَلَهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنًا Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ And call to the path of your Lord with wisdom and good preachings and argue with them with that which is better you know using the hujjah the quran and the sunnah the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam using that not just this debating for the sake of debating and for the sake of putting forth your view and putting forth yourself waqala imam shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala wallahi ma nadartu ahadan illa ala nasiha imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, he said, I swear by Allah that I never debated anyone except as advice. Min baba nasiha, as advice, to advise them. He didn't like debate because he was from the salaf of this ummah. They didn't, they hated, they de de hated de debate because they were so close, they had the sunnah so close to them. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anna majma'in, what did they need after that? What do you need after kitab illa wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the fahim and the salaf of this ummah? What do you need after that? It's there. The books are there. The ru'at were there for them, for the salaf. So they were so close, they didn't need anything else. They didn't need someone to come with their view, their opinion, come with a new idea, a new concept for understanding those texts, a new way of, 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 of understanding creed or a new practice. They detested it. Then the Shaykh mentioned, أَمَّا نُوَعْ ثَانِي وَجِدَ الْمَذْمُومُ وَمَا ذَكَرَهُ الْمُصَنَّفُ وَلَكَدْ هَذَرَ مِنْهُ الْقُرْآنُ وَالسُنَّةُ وَالسَّلَفُ So the second type of debating is the sinful type. And this is what the Imam Baba Hari uh, has already mentioned and that the Qur'an has warned us against and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has warned us against and the Salaf of this Ummah hated and detested and warned us against uh, getting involved in debate and argumentation. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith of Abi Umama رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما ضل قوم بعد هدى كانوا عليه إلا أوتوا جدل. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said as was narrated uh, in Tirmidhi وحسنه على الباني رحمه الله تعالى where the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said that a people never went astray after receiving guidance that they were upon except when they were inclined towards debate or when they were given to debate. So the Prophet 
prohibited debating and argumentation and getting into controversy. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as was narrated in Bukhari, Abghadu rijal ilallahi alad al khasam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa said, the most hated men to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is those, <coughs> those people who get into, who dispute and get into uh, debate and controversy. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مراث القرآن كفر. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said as was narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه collected in Muslim Imam Ahmed وصحه العلامة أحمد الشاكر أحمد شاكر رحمه الله تعالى where the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said مراث القرآن كفر that debating regarding the Qur'an is disbelief. So this shows us again, ayyul ahabbatikillah, that we should suffice with the madhab of the salaf. What did the salaf say with regards to tafsir? We don't need new uh, tafsir to update our, our, our tafsir. Doesn't mean we don't do research and we don't benefit and we don't apply things to our modern circumstances. It's not what I'm saying. Well, what we're saying is that to reinterpret and to go with interpretations that contradict the interpretations in the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah, then that is where we're asking for to lead a, to to be led astray. And the Salaf of this Ummah, Rahimahullah, like Omar Ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, قال سيأتي الناس سيجادلكم بشبهات القرآن خذوهم بالسنن فإن أصحاب السنن أعلم بكتاب الله أخرجه على لكائي عمر Ibn al-Khatabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu said there will come a people that will seek to argue with you or debate with you with regards to the shubahat of the Qur'an meaning those verses in the Qur'an that do not contain legislation or, do, or, or, or require tafsir from the sunnah or require uh, or that have perhaps uh, are, are open, more open to uh, interpretation. So there will come a people who will want to debate with you about this. And he said, then take them to the sunnah. For verily, the people of the Sunnah are most knowledgeable about the Qur'an. Umar bin, uh, Umar bin Abdulaziz rahimahullah ta'ala said, من جعل دينه غرضا للخصومات أكثر الشك أو قال يكثر التحول And this is a very powerful um, statement of Umar bin, bin, uh, bin Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala and he said whoever makes his religion a point of debate is a person who will be in more fall into more doubtfulness or has has a lot of doubtfulness akhtar al-shak or he said, he will be a person who is constantly changing, meaning changing his method, changing his view. One minute it's halal, next minute it's haram. One minute he's with this sect, next minute he's with this sect, etc. That this is a dangerous thing, that that ithbat, that ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah, sunnah of the Prophet is is a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. 
and to be firm upon the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. Because we have a salaf. We have those people who sacrifice their lives, their property, their wealth to preserve this religion and their, their scholarship and what they left behind in preserving the madhab of the salaf of this ummah and the madhab of the sahaba, the creed of the sahaba, the creed of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as was revealed in the Qur'an and revealed in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they preserve this religion but those people who are given to debate and get into controversy they're not firm upon what they believe even they're not, and they're not, definitely not firm upon the haq so they'll always want to debate and they'll want a new view and if that view s sounds good to them and if that view overtakes them what they were saying in argumentation and, di and disputing then they will incline towards that view and leave off even the truth. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And we'll end with one last statement of the Salaf of this Ummah, which is a beautiful statement <coughs> of uh, Imam, uh, I believe Imam Shafi'i, This is uh, what happened to Imam Shafi'i. كَانَ يَمْشِي وَرَاهُ رَجُلْ مِنْ أَحْلَ الْأَحْوَى يُقُوْ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ اسمع مني شيئاً أكلمك به أو أحاجك وأخبرك رأي قال فإن غلبتني قال تتبعني قال فإن جاء رجل آخر فكلمنا فغلبنا قال نتبعه قال مالك يا عبد الله بعث بعث الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بدين واحد وأراك تتنقل من دين إلى دين. beautiful statement and this is actually a statement in uh, the book uh, شريعة. And it was a statement by Imam, uh, Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala. So there was a man who, walked be, who was walking behind Imam Malik from the people of desires. And he said, O oh, Abdullah, O oh, oh, father of Abdullah, Ya Aba Abdullah, listen to me. Listen to something from me I want to speak to you about and debate with you about. And I will tell you my opinion. So Imam Malik responded, Rahimallah Ta'ala, by saying, And what if you overtake me? He said, Then you will follow me. Then Imam Malik said, And then if another man comes, and he speaks to us, and he beats us in this argument, then the man said, then we'll follow him. Then Imam Malik said, Oh, Ab uh, uh, Abdullah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent by Allah with, a with one religion. And I see that you are a person who changes from religion to religion. That's a very powerful statement which sums up the madhab of the salaf with regards to this issue of debate and argumentation and that they saw it, the danger of it and, and we've seen it even in practice that when people get involved in those things they are the people who are most in doubt about their religion and those are often the people who leave their deen or they go from madhab to madhab one day from Ahl Sunnah the next day they're, they're Shi'i another day they're Sufi another day they're Takfiri so they change, they change and finally, Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, uh, a man came to him and said, Nujadalaka qala lastu fi shak min dini. Very powerful statement by Imam Hassan al-Basri. A man came to him and said, uh, can I debate with you? He said, I'm not in doubt with regards to my religion. So, ayyallah habbati fillah, Avoid getting into debate and controversy. 
and stick with the guidance of the ulama, especially those ulama you trust from Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah that are well known for, for their love and their perseverance on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah that follow their, their way. If you are not with the ability to go to the text yourself and do research on issues or, or what have you, then you're more dependent and more in need of making uh, taqlid in some issues. Not taqleeding with regards to your creed, but in fact, taqlid with regards maybe to your fiqh and in making and asking questions about fatawa and just taking that opinion that one of the great imams had as a view. But beware, ayyul ahabbati fillah, in getting in debate and argument and controversy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm nafir, us kuntaybu, amina muttaqabbina, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.